all right so um the first step that you would take is to first log into canvas so what i like to do is i like to use the search button here and then i like to go to the onion and garlic recipe page which is on the aoi admin page and then here is where you can access all the details for various programs so then since it's an alphabetical order i just go to um canva here and then here is the username and here is the password so i'll just um enter that and then we'll get started are you on the army of youth platform is that where you found this all at yes on notion on notion okay thank you yes onion and garlic recipe Mm -hmm. okay so when you go onto canva where it says canva yeah there, okay log in okay Oh no, this is the wrong one. Okay. Oopsie. So the next thing that we would want to do is, now that we're in on Canva, is um, go to the quote card database. So um, here, I would like to use um, one of the more recent ones that have been quoted. Um, usually what you can do if you'd like to um, find where to get code cards is you go to the design of you on notion and then here you'll see um a whole lot of various um quotes that are here quotes and um sometimes questions and you can um choose any one so I will take just one of the um, code cards that are just um, miscellaneous ones so they don't really have a pillar content and these are the ones since there's nothing in the um, pillar content um, block here where the pillar content source is written but here you'll always find where the uh, code card comes from and I think this is really no I don't think it's really helpful it is very helpful because um, when you go on to Google Drive
um, this will really be helpful in finding where we can put the quote card so that anyone and everyone can have access to it. So we go to AOI workers, and then we'll go onto content machine, and then we'll keep that there still, and then we'll come back to that when we're here. done designing our quote card. So then um, what I like to do first is that I like to start with the um, a square Instagram post and then move on to the Instagram story, which can be used on both Instagram and Facebook because the aspect ratios are just the same. And then um, for the past while, we really haven't been um, doing um, Pinterest pins, but because um, we weren't making use of those, but now that we'll, we're getting back to Pinterest, I think we can definitely um, make use of those and add this into the training that we're doing today. Okay. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to um, the various um, layouts that you can choose from. I'm just going to take this one. Are there any the best? Sorry? Oh, I was just going to ask, are there any like guidelines or any like sort of specific things you look for when you choose a template? I'm not really actually I just um because you can customize the template to suit yourself so often it won't um, end up looking like the template but um, starting off with something and some text is a really good place to start you could even um, start with a plain quote card and then um, start that way as well okay that makes sense thank you yes that was good clarity. Thank you. Makes sense now. Thank you very much. So what I often like to do is to uh, copy the text first initially, and then I also like to just um, check the Bible reference just to see um, just to make sure that that is the right one and that I write the correct one so 2nd Timothy 2 verse 2 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 is um all and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also so then we definitely see that here we um this relates to um missionary training and sharing the gospel with others as well so then we know that we have the right um bible reference then i would go here what I like to do always is um, with the custom text. I'm not sure if you just saw what I did there, but I ungrouped the text so all the elements are different. And then I can delete what I don't want to have and keep what I'd like to have. So I'm going to delete that for now. This I intend on using as my, um, for the picture and we just drag it to the bottom there you go and then with um here i'm just going to um paste the text that we have i'm not always going to leave it the way it is, but it's just great to have it um, with you so you can see what um, 
you're working with um, the order of the words and to help avoid any um, spelling errors as well because um, often you can you know what it's meant to say but then um, that's how you often miss an error because you know it's meant to say something else and you know what it's meant to say but then you don't pick up on some errors so I think I found that really helpful in my experience just um, being yes just copy and pasting and then working from that and then if i want to um write a specific text differently i'll just erase it in the text box and then um leave space and add it in so that makes and it's also a lot more time efficient than trying to um just copy it down and um put it back in so we always want what's best and the most time efficient So that's what I like to do. And then um, here is where you can edit your um, text. So you can choose from a whole variety of texts. There are many, many texts that um, are available for one to choose from. And um, I'm just going to take this one. Um, Uh oh, what happened? Looks like the holes are missing. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Okay. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and just make sure we don't have any missing notes. So I think another part that takes up quite a bit of time is finding the... Um, the right image so um because that's a lot about a lot of what graphics is all about and often i like to look for um keywords so um often i like to when i go to um i first click on the book card itself and then i can um go to photos then often I can search a any um what's this any keyword that's all it any keyword that is linked to the um quote card. So here I'm just going to go to training and we'll see what we can find there. So here we can we can see a whole lot of people being trained to do something. Um, okay, most of these have to do with fitness. I see. Yes. Um, so we want something that's um, relevant to the context of our code class. So I just want to. Oh, that's not where that's meant to be. Oopsie. And we just undo that and then click on the actual thing and then how did you how did you get rid of that how did you do that um i just click um on this button or um you can click Control and z and then that will undo any other changes oh thank you yes so i'm not sure why usually when i um do it this way it works but I guess um, what we can also just do is we'll do that and then we delete that and we take the image and log it And also what I like to do is if I have an image like this and um, I remember that I had a white block by the um, text at the bottom. So then often when you add an element, it can often go on top of other elements. Okay, now 
here it's all right but usually you can click on the block that was here now now that says position and then that can um change the position of the elements like if you put a um a square block sometimes it can overlay your other elements and then you can't edit your other elements so um just to give an example of that i'll quickly do this and then um I like a square you can really um search anything that you would like um in the search box and then what i would do is if i just enlarge my square a bit like that um you can see that i can't edit the text that's behind the square block so it's very the very easy solution to that is I choose position and I want the square block to move backward so I can edit the text on top. So I'll just um, press backward and now if I click on the text, you can see that I'm able to um, now edit it and that's what we definitely want. So that. And then I often like to add an overlay if the picture is very um, bright like this one so I'll just show you how I do that so I'll go to um, elements again and then I'll say square and then I want a I want a black overlay and then what I'll do is I will first change the transparency and as we mentioned before we definitely want this overlay to move to the back so what we'll do is we'll just click on position we'll click on backwards till we can't um anymore we till we don't have the option anymore we know that it's furthest at the back but now that it's furthest at the back what we need to do is we need to grab hold of this and move let me just do that and now I can quickly edit my overlay that I have so just make it go all the way to the edges of the screen and to make sure that we can actually see what's going on in the actual image I like to change the transparency of the overlay so it's not too dark but still um, an overlay so I just um, changed it there and I changed it to 82% so I can still see the image, but I can still see the text in front of it. Then I'll move my square back to where it was. And then um, one of the most important things that I forgot was we actually need to add the logo. So um, the Army of Youth logo, you'll be able to find where it says uploads. And you can choose from various different logos. They can use this one. Um, the shield and sword or um, what I like to do is seeing that this is um, against a black overlay I will use the army of youth logo that has a white um, the and of if that makes sense the white um, text there's another one that I used to use but I'm not quite sure where that is um, this, this one looks a bit washed out let me see if I can find the other one in the meanwhile. In the meantime, um, should be getting there. Can you type in the bar up there, the search, and show in it? Will it do that? Oh, no. <laughs> you can't do that with the uploads. Okay. This is the one I'm looking for. kind of look the same. Okay. It looks like they're both the same so that's all right um then we just make logo smaller and i like to um try my best <laughs> to bake it um in the center and then we'll just move it until it's more or less in the center and then there is where we're going to put our logo and then now um we want to identify the keywords that we want to highlight in this text i just want to close this quickly 
Um, so we want to identify the keywords that we want to highlight in this specific text. So what I think would be the keywords is that we don't um, it works, but we want more duplicates. So the keywords would be um, duplicate and missionary training. So um, what I like to do is actually next page. Um. The um, text is the most important since that's the message that we want to share, like a little sermon kind of. So we want to make sure that that is um, large enough for everyone to see, and we definitely want to make sure that it is visible. So after having done so, um, the next thing, as I mentioned, I want the keywords to be missionary training and duplicate. So what I'm going to just do is erase the missionary training, but yet leave space for it so I can um, use another text in place of um, this one. Use another font. Sorry, I said another text. And then also um, duplicates we can erase and then leave space for that. Then, um, as I mentioned, we'd like to um, add some of our own text. And um, I'm just going to um, say, add a heading. And I'm just going to move it. And then what I'd like is that the highlights be of the same uh, color. So what you could also do is you could look to see here if there's something that you really like, like the way the text has been highlighted or so forth. So um, you can make use of what they do give to you here. So um, let's say we want to use this one, for example. What we can do is we just take it, we make it smaller. Let me just delete this one since um, adding your own heading is a lot easier because you just um, choose the text you want. So then here, we'd like to make this quite um, a whole lot smaller. I think 64 will do. A little bit smaller than that, 80. Um, and the one thing that I really enjoy most about Canvas is that you can um, work on your mobile device. So that's the one mm -hmm. thing that I really enjoy the most. Seems like the text returned to 105. I'm not sure why. But that's all right. I will see that 42 is too small. 36. So then if we see that our word is way too long, what we can just do is select this move it for now and then we can put the in on its own place and then just quickly move the comma there and we move this back okay. What I find with um, making quote cards, it's often um, like trial and error, you um, try and see what works. Just gonna add the comma there. 
now. There we go. And then I want to take my square a little bit back, but not to the edge, not completely to the edge. Here we go. change this text hopefully the o's don't decide to um disappear again i would like to use this let's see there we go then what i really enjoy about this what i enjoy the most about this is that oh we could do this back and then what we can do here is um just move it down let's move this down what i'd like to do is make this one smaller a lot smaller so i'm gonna try something in the 60s 64 that looks just about right then what we're going to do is we're going to take the block move it down a bit then what we can do since we see that there are between the um space there's not enough space for the word missionary training what we can definitely do is we can go here to spacing and you can choose the space that you want to have between um the letters so the letter letters can be really spaced out like this and we see that we have enough space for that and that also um emphasizes each and every word so we can definitely do that and then we can increase our line heights which is the difference between um two lines and then um as we do so we start to see that there's more space available for this section that says missionary training i just want to I'm going to take hold of that and move that to the top and then Can you take like the missionary training word and move it all the way into the white area while you're working or do you how does that work? Oh yes, you can do that. That's exactly what I'm doing now. Okay. There we go. And then we see that we still want um, there to be a bigger divide between the N and the missionary training. So you just go back to where it says line height. And then you just increase it some more until you see that the space that is between the word N and missionary training suits you best. You can also change the line height of this one. So I just want there to be a distinction between um, the two words, so they don't look like they're stuck together. And then I'm just going to take that and move it. All right. And then this, I just want to move to um, in the center pretty much of the word. And something I didn't realize is that I wanted to add the word um, duplicate okay. underneath. Yes. So now, <laughs> instead of doing what we just did, I'm going to change the line height again to make it smaller. And then um, instead of that method, what I'm going to just do is I'm going to edit this and um, click enter a few times instead of changing the line height. So it suits the amount of words that we have. All right. So 
so um often it can take very amount of time to get done with one so but i think it um just needs patience sometimes because it's not always um too straightforward but definitely practice um really with practice you improve more and more and more so um and now we see we have duplicates so i'm going to make this another um font similar to the one that we have here but um not exactly the same because i also want to highlight the word um duplicate so i'll just say add a heading and then um i'll choose a text that i really um think would go with that so I'll just take this text and then I edit the text and then do I do page. and then by clicking this button in here you can um, easily make sure that all the letters are up uppercase instead of um, pressing caps lock the um, Canva just does it for you if you want all your letters to be uppercase so there we go just going to try and make sure that that lands up being somewhere in the middle And what we're going to do is we're going to add our reference because the um, great thing to remember is that this will often um, look bigger when you post it. So if something looks too small, it often, like the reference text, it often isn't. Um, just have to move that up a bit. And then, you know, we just double check our reference text. It's 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. So then we go back here. There we go. And um, I just want um, this outline on the outside to be the same color as the block for the um, the block for the text. And this I would really like to be um, since it's our scripture text. I really want it to be a more um, text that's more bold so let's try that there we go that um works and then um so now um if we're happy with the way it looks then we're just going to click download and then we download it as a png then we just wait for it to download quickly. We don't want to. And then I think one of the most important things is to um, see where it comes from. So here we go to DLV. We have the um, code cards that don't belong to any pillar content. And we see the folder for that in the um, content machine so um here we see that they have a system for naming them so that um, um one of the problems is that before we started naming the code cards like this often 
they would just be um, jumbled and in a random order within the um, content within the folder on the content machine and that would be make it hard for anyone who was scheduling because you couldn't see um, which story went with which post and how far you are whereas um, if we these are ones that I just recently added this week to um, the folder because I didn't add the um, file name on my phone. But if we see here, um, we can easily just tell someone that, um, hey, I've scheduled all the code cards till um, number 12, for example. And then the person who comes after can know that they should move on from number 13 onwards. So um, it's really helpful putting numbers to it so we can e make easier reference to the various code cards. So here I see the last one here is number 22. And what I just want to do is open this. It's not what I want to do. And we have this download here, and I'm going to uh, rename it. Or what you can just do is upload it to um, a folder. That works equally as well. To make it easy to sift through my downloads, I'm just going to search for it. Open. Just wait for it to upload. And then we'll find it where it is at the top. Here we have a code card, then we just click on it and we press um, rename. So what we want to do is we want to know the folder. The folder name comes first. So we know SMS and then this one will be 23. As we saw the last one at the bottom was 22. And then we know that this is a, a quote card. And we know that this um, format can be used for posting on Facebook and oh, we'll start with Instagram. on Instagram and Facebook, the square ones, that's where they belong. And then we just say, okay. And then we see now it has made its way to the bottom of all the rest of the quote cards. Now, um, what I um, like is that we have it all saved. Let me, excuse me for that. And then we go back to home. And what I like to do beforehand is just take notes of the fonts that I've used so I can use the exact same um, ones when I do the story post. So then I'm just going to go home. And we want to do a story post. So, to make this quite a bit story. And then we have all these um, various templates. I like to start with blank when that's blank and then we know that the um, 
keyword that we use to find our image was training and it will also be here in the section where it says recently used so time it'll be a lot quicker because we know what we did so Um, the same process that we did before with the other um, card, and then we just change the line height so there can be a, like a space between um, the two words and then I want to just move that up and then we know that where it duplicates will be by itself
we're done. Um, oh no, I forgot one more thing. Um, we just want to add in that or that. There we go. Now we can download that. And um, you could do um, the Pinterest pin very um, similarly to um, that as well. So it's going to add. Add that to the folder. And then eat it up here. There we go. And we can also rename this. Then this will be between P3, he said, and then we're going to just say, um, it's a quote card, and where is it going to be used? It's going to be used as a social story on any platform, really, so I just leave it as um, is, as a social story, and then we'll see that it moves down to where its um, friend is, so... <laughs> Um, where the matching ones are so they'll always be together in the folder so it's very easy and um, very organized and um, that is how we do it and then if we see that we've completed it then we all go back to Notion where we first started and then we will change um, here what it says um, this is the 11th of August and then, hmm. you can't see where it says done. Okay, there we go. There's the date used. I'm going to, um, once we're done, I um, immediately schedule that on. And then, since we already um, made it, instead of saying ready for designer, we can change it to say ready for scheduler. But uh, then that's it and then that's the whole entire um, process and I hope that will be very helpful and that's how it's done and then you can get rid of that you can just return to home and then you're pretty much done and if you would like to um, access it later on you can see that here this one is still generating but here we can um see the one that we just created recently and that is pretty much it i hope that was all right so um okay um let me ask you a question on a typical day how long does it actually take to make one of these quote cards is because um i noticed that was close to about 50 well 45 to 50 minutes what's this is that the standard time to take to make one quote card um not really actually um most of the time it can um take um like between 10 and 15 minutes to just make one so okay. um one being either the either the square post or the story post but i find that usually the story post can even take about five minutes to ten minutes um it takes 
quite a lot less time because I don't I'm not searching for an image or anything of that sort so it takes a whole lot less time because okay. often what I like to do is I set a goal for myself where I do um, three quote cards in one hour so basically it's six I do three quotes in one hour so it will be six because it's um, a story and a square post so okay. that's the goal that I always set for myself and work with nice job nice job and uh, refresh me again how many quote cards do we do per month Are per we a month yeah are we well, do we have a goal that we're shooting for for 60 quote cards a month um or is that for another department um understand the 60 quote cards would be um being extracted from the life cost at um, the monthly life cost but um month i would say we often um have a varying amount because um sometimes we run out of quote cards and sometimes we have um times where the quote cards are very consistent and are sometimes two um new ones or three new ones so but per week i could give you an average so per week it could average from seven new ones to um 21 new quote cards okay. so it really um varies but between that range gotcha gotcha it helps us to know because as we get on um new people coming on what do you think the skill um and the level of that a person would need to be on their computer in order to do this would you say that this is a beginner thing or uh, um, uh, um intermediate or what would you say this is and doing quote cards what you're doing I think it's a beginner thing. Okay. And um, one thing that I like is that we can really um, divide the task amongst us if there is more than one person. So um, let's say we will have three people on our team and we'd like to get um, three code cards going out every day. And then what we basically do is we'd say, okay, our total for the week will be... Um, three times obviously seven days and that would um, give us 21 quote cards so then everyone could get seven to make for the week and maybe um, um, let whoever is scheduling know or schedule them um, by Monday or Sunday actually no yeah or Friday the week before that would work best. So schedule them Friday the week before so we know that everything for the next week is sorted. And that also gives like a um, run over time so that if you're not able to do to schedule them on Friday, you can also schedule them on Sunday. So um, I think it's not oh, too good. hectic. And the one thing that I really do like about Canva is that you can work from your mobile phone on the app. So that makes um, so much more efficient and you can really do it on the go okay so the things that they will need in order to do this um say if they're on the go um they would need canva and they would have they need notion right notion Whoa. yes okay so yes okay. And, and that's pretty much it yeah what, and what also if, um access to the content machine on google drive so they can put the quote cards there on google drive Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're working with those three platforms. Okay, good. That's not nice for them to know. And then um, also, how many people do we have on the team right now? Whoa. They're actually 